okie doke. So we're talking about elastic collisions in one dimension between two individual masses. Uh, and so let's look at one. We have mass one is moving to the right at initial velocity one. And here's poor old mass two, a target just waiting to be hit uh, by mass one. And the initial velocity of mass two is zero. That's how we'd like it to be all the time. And uh, we have equations already for the final velocity of each of these. Uh, the final velocity of V1 is M1 minus M2 divided by the sum of the masses, M1 plus M2, all times initial velocity of 1. And we have the final velocity of 2 is 2M1 divided by the sum of the masses. Uh, and that was pretty sound, and all times initial velocity of 1 as well. So, uh, let's actually do a quick example to see how this works if the initial velocity of 2 is 0, if it's at rest. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to make up some numbers. Uh, nice easy ones. M1 is 2 kilograms. M2 is uh, 3 kilograms. And initial velocity of 1 is of, of, of 4 meters per second. Okay. The equations tell us uh, what the final velocities will be. And let's find out what they are. V1 in blue is going to be M1 minus M2, which is 2 kilograms minus 3 kilograms. This is uh, all divided by the sum of the masses, 2 kilograms plus 3 kilograms. All divided, oh, I'm sorry, all times the initial velocity of 1, that's a second. And so we have V1 is going to be negative 0.8 meters per second, if I did the math right. Uh, and at V2, in this case, would be in red, and we'll do that down here, and that is going to be, <clears throat> V2 will be twice M1 is 2 kilograms divided by the sum of the mass is 2 kilogram plus 3 kilogram all times uh, v naught 1 which is 4 meters per second and v2 is equal to uh, 4.8 uh, 3.2 meters per second okay uh, obviously in the positive direction so v2 goes off to the right at 3.2 meters per second v1 actually comes backwards uh, and by the way, this is consistent with what we saw in class. If M2 is more than M1, which is the case here, uh, 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms, we looked at the example in class where M2 is really, really big and M1 basically bounces back. Whenever the target M2 is more massive uh, than M1, then M1 ends up going backwards. So uh, that does it for this problem. Uh, but this is a problem that... Uh, where the initial velocity of the second object was zero, and we are allowed to use these formulas that we derived in class, the question now becomes what happens if you are doing a problem where both objects are moving before the collision? So let's set one up. Uh, I'm going to have M1 going to the right at initial velocity V0 1 of uh, 3 meters per second. And M2, let's say, is going to the left, initial velocity, M, uh, initial velocity of 2, of negative, I'm going to get rid of some of this other stuff. Um, I don't think I knew how to use these things. Get this stuff out of the way. Okay, uh, initial velocity of 2, let's say, is negative 2 meters per second. And let's get these guys' masses. M1 is... Uh, 4 kilograms, and M2 is uh, 6 kilograms. Okay. Uh, we cannot use the formulas we derived for, I'm going to move them down here, uh, for the final velocity in a collision. Here's the V1 final velocity. Here's the V2 final velocity. And there, boom. I can't use those because... When I derive those equations, the initial velocity of 2 is 0, and this time it isn't. So there's one quick step that we do, and that is to put ourselves in a frame of reference, which we call the problem frame, where the initial velocity of 2 is 0. So the problem frame is 
is basically the frame of reference that of M2 before the collision. And we get ourselves in the problem frame by taking these velocities, which we have to recognize, these are in the frame of reference of the Earth or the table, which we consider to be fixed. So we have to take those velocities and, uh, and figure out what these velocities would be in the problem frame. Well, what I want to do is get V0 2 to be 0. I can do that by adding 2 meters per second to the velocity of 2, the initial velocity of 2. So if, if I say that, so basically what I'm saying is that the problem frame, by frame, of course, I mean frame of reference, I get things in the problem frame by taking velocities in the Earth frame and adding 2 meters per second to them. So what I'm going to do then is I will say the I'll keep blue. The problem frame is blue, and uh, and what I'm going to do is simply add two meter per second to each velocity. That gives me v naught one is the Earth frame of three meters per second plus two meters per second gives me five meters per second. That's its velocity in the problem frame. V naught one, I'm sorry, v naught two, which of course was negative two meters per second. I'm going to add two meters per second to that and v naught 2 in the problem frame is 0, which is what I want. All right, so I'm now in the frame of reference of m2 before the collision. I'm in the problem frame, and I have v naught 1 is 5 meter per second. v naught 2 is 0, and now I can use the equations where v naught 2 is equal to 0. So let's find the final velocity. Find v1 and v2 in the problem frame of reference by using the equations I derived for elastic collision final velocities. V1 is m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 all times v naught 1. I put in the values, and I, of course, have forgotten what they are. m1 is 4 kilograms, m2 is 6. 4 kilograms minus 6 kilograms, all divided by 4 4 kilograms plus 6 kilograms times v naught 1 in the problem frame, which is 5 meters per second. Gives me a final velocity of uh, negative 2 over 10 of negative 1 meter per second. Okay? Yes. And so then I can find the final velocity of object 2. 2m1 over m1 plus m2 times v naught 1. m1 is 4 kilograms. 2 times 4 kilograms. 4 kilograms plus 6 kilograms. All times 5 meters per second. That's v naught 1 in the problem frame. And that gives me a final velocity for 2 of. 4 meters per second, positive 4 meters per second. Okay, so that's what their final velocities are relative to the initial motion of M2. And even if I can't get my head around that, uh, all I have to do to get my final answer to get my velocity in the Earth frame is to use this relative velocity equation and put myself back in the Earth frame. So to put myself back in the Earth frame, which is where I want to be to answer this question, I simply say that the earth frame, earth frame, is the problem frame. Let's see, up here I said that the problem frame is earth frame plus 2 meters per second, so I'll subtract 2 meters per second to get my velocities back in the earth frame. So that means v1 becomes negative 1 meter per second here, minus 2 meter per second, gives me negative 3 meters per second, and v2 is positive 4 minus 2 gives me positive 2 meters per second. And there are my final velocities in a collision in which uh, both objects were moving beforehand. Go into the problem frame, use the equations, come back out of the problem frame, get your answers, and be 